Okay. Uh, hi, welcome to a breakout discussion to talk a little bit about the status of Patrick Oley's efforts on refactoring the E2B framework, sort of where we're at and what direction we were headed. Um, I think this, uh, we talked a little bit about this during SIG testing on Tuesday, but uh, since the main objections were raised by uh, Tim St. Clair and he wasn't present, we felt like all we were doing was uh, playing guessing games. So, yeah. The, I think uh, I'll just take it away, Tim. So the biggest objection I have was directly, so inside of the intent testing framework, we do things that are kind of a little bit weird in that we do binary smashing. Um, so binary smashing is basically you, you, you muck all the symbols of X into your binary. And then the way we build the test E2E file is, is kind of different, right? Like it's, it's, this, it's an executable that, that people can run independently, but they're actually, they're actually tests, right? So like the way Golang does a split, uh, it, it's a little bit odd, right? Um, in that you don't usually create binaries that way. And what I, what I was objecting to was that as part of this change, we were actually smashing, doing bin smashing on um, the cloud provider pieces. And I can understand that in the long run, if we have a plan, to piecemeal take out those integration pieces as a separate entity, but this actually conflates the dependency graph right now. So by bin smashing those extra pieces of all the different providers that included Azure and OpenStack and other stuff, and that's the opposite objective of what we're trying to get to. So uh, what I was missing here was if this is an incremental step for a larger plan to move this out of tree, or if this was like, you know, I just wanted to make it more convenient. And I think there's a, that piece of understanding of where we want to, the ideal state of where we want to get to is to remove those dependencies uh, versus like actually creating a larger DAG, right? Okay, well, so my immediate concern was to get rid of the direct dependency of the end-to-end -end framework itself on that code. Because that's the current state of affairs. Uh, we have test end-to-end -end E framework and it contains all kinds of code that does an if check on the current provider and then has an import for Azure on, on Google and calls certain APIs directly. So the, the dependency graph is basically the package framework. The, the, the framework package depends on the different cloud providers. And that is a problem uh, on a practical level for, for people who try to use that framework outside of Kubernetes because they end up importing, trying to import that package and they have to pull in all of those dependencies. Mm -hmm. so that, that, that was my motivation. So, uh, so you wanted to push it directly out of framework itself, but we just basically pushed the problem up a layer. Yes, that. that's right, that's right. So my, and my, my solution is what you, what you observed that the decision to still have those provider support in the end-to-end -end test binary, that is now done at the uh, test suite level. So it's not a framework anymore that depends on a certain provider, it's the test suite, and therefore it is under the control of a test suite author, whether he wants, say, Google Cloud support. For Kubernetes, uh, the current situation is, as, you, as, as we, well, it, because it's a hard dependency, the, the test binary the author doesn't really have a choice. He has to have those different providers. And my pull request doesn't change that status because I don't want to break the testing as it's currently done in Kubernetes. It, it, it was supposed to be just refactoring. I don't, I'm not trying to change the scope of what Kubernetes is testing. I know that there are lots of discussions now happening or starting in this new work group where people are trying to figure out whether Kubernetes should be blocked by a test failure, for example, on, on one of these cloud providers. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, for now, I'm trying to keep out of that. I just wanted to get the test framework working for me. Yeah. For, me I, for me, for me, it would be without both providers because I don't need them. I understand, so, uh, I apologize. Um, you kind so, of stepped, you stepped into a very thorny mess and tried to yeah. do the best thing to clean it up. And I, I totally get that. Uh, I, it makes a lot more sense what you're doing now. Um, I, I understand you're pushing the, the dependencies over to here. I think one thing that's missing though, 
that we, we can probably address in a separate issue, which we should log, is that what are we going to do with this cloud provider integration code? Because it is, um, it is a real problem on the end-to-end -end test framework. So yeah. I feel like that's part of the roadmap that, or, or, or you know, you, you, Tim, I feel like I heard you say you weren't really sure what the plan was. And maybe what I'm hearing from Patrick is his plan didn't go quite as far as that. And so you're talking about putting together a separate plan. But it did sound to me like Patrick's efforts at refactoring were such that conceivably you can use the end-to-end -end test framework without any cloud providers whatsoever. And that could lead to a next step where we start to break up the, the tests that depend upon cloud provider specific code into their own test suites. You could yeah, so and, and that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I wanted to add myself. With that first pull request in place, what you can do is now go to a cloud provider and tell them, okay, we've split out your code into this one particular package. And if you want to run your, this framework yourself on your own CI setup, then you become responsible for your cloud provider specific code. We're going to take it out of Kubernetes and you can take the rest of the framework and put together your own test suite with the upstream Kubernetes parts and your own code into one test suite. And then you can run it with kube test on your own infrastructure and Kubernetes itself will get rid of that particular cloud provider specific code. That would yeah, be the logical next step if that's what Kubernetes wants and if cloud providers agree. Yeah, I'm totally cool with the, the game plan of opening a separate issue for a long-term plan of finding a way to refactor the cloud provider integration uh, for long-term support. Uh, you are going to have, because the framework has this plumbing for provider through, people are going to loop in these dependencies in some way, shape, or form, which will be non-trivial. So long as we log the issues to deal with this, um, I, I think that seems reasonable for right now. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, I think what was unclear to me is like it, we, what your plan was here, right? Um, I get it now. Uh, I appreciate, I sorry it takes so long. I've been all over the world. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the, uh, I get it. Um, I'm happy to unblock it. Uh, but I do think we do need to address this problem. So uh, another Another question I had that maybe is somewhere in the direction either of you are headed is what would it take to turn this into a repo, a, a staging repo, basically? I, I am led to believe that if you get your code in staging, you write it in such a way that it doesn't really depend upon any of the tangly bits that are elsewhere in KK, and that might make it even easier to reuse and or eventually one day extract into its own repo. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a shiny city on a hill, which doesn't exist, but the, it, it does give you some benefits, but they come at a different cost, right? So if we do this, you need to create a separate repo because the way people will import it changes now. Yes. So, so you can import it right now by just having the full long ridiculous path <laughs> yes. into framework, right? I, I raised that just because I know that I've heard discussions in SIG architecture and elsewhere that what we really don't want to encourage in the long term is people vendoring Kubernetes Kubernetes. And so I'm unclear on how they would gain access to this framework package without doing that. Right now they have to, and I agree that this is not ideal uh, besides for conceptual or besides the dependency issues which can, which can be avoided by just being careful in, in what you allow in that particular package, uh, it, is a, it is a practical problem when trying to, to vendor this with DEP, for example, because you're forced to, well, actually, if this is the only package that you pull, you can still do it, whatever. You can, do, you can pull whatever revision you want. It doesn't affect everything, anything else. But yeah, I, I think it would be cleaner to have it separate, separated out with a shorter import path. I'm not um, too concerned about it for the moment because it works at a practical level. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm not trying to blow your scope and I have heard you say over and over that it works for you, it works right now. Yeah. And I hear the word practical and I, am a, I super agree yeah. with all of those things. Yeah. I just know there are efforts ongoing to try and like 
extract parts of KK and can and discourage uh, ongoing things to do that. So I feel like if we can, maybe it's about carrying your work forward to the next step, which is making it to making it so that it could be used in staging. I just bring this up because Tim, I feel like you sort of started the testing common sub project, and maybe that's why Hans is here about like trying to develop reusable frameworks that encourage or facilitate testing of Kubernetes, both at an integration or E2E level, and have those live completely out of tree so that we can start to make it easier for anybody to write end-to-end -end tests against Kubernetes or integration I, tests, whatever. I, I, do, I can, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, do, I can certainly, uh, sorry, I, I can certainly help with moving that forward. Um, and I, I'm interested also personally in getting it into a staging and, and, and it under a different import path. So I, I can certainly help with that. But on the other hand, I would still prefer to get that pull request as it is now, get merged first. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, we, we can, I can unblock that this afternoon or right after this meeting. The, uh, the second step of staging uh, is not as clean and clear. Um, you will need to do a couple of things. And I'd highly recommend opening an issue first before you do that because you need a separate repo and that repo needs to get approved. And then there's all kinds of other machinations and jiggery as part of staging that does this auto replication into this fake other repo. Uh, so if I can make a proposal, I feel like Tim, you have a much more articulate vision for what the next steps are to carry Patrick's work to forward to sort of the universe you described where we stop bin smashing everything together. And, and I think like it might be appropriate if you made those, those follow on issues. I'm just trying to make sure we, we lead to actual outcomes here. Yeah, I can create the issues and I'll loop in this group as well as the conformance group because it'll affect them too. That's fair. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of other people besides just the three of us. I'm curious, like, uh, has this been informative or useful for you? Do you feel like you have things you'd like to add to this discussion? Uh, so on and so forth. I'll quickly say a few words as to why I joined. Um, so we in Cert Manager basically had a similar thing. Well, not quite a similar thing, um, but we needed an end-to-end -end testing framework. So that required us to stand up Kubernetes and be able to do the majority of the things that happen in that framework, but in our own project. Um, we went down the route of actually, like I, I, we don't import KK anywhere. So we went down the route of basically taking that framework package and um, I suppose you could say reverse engineering it from what it is in K slash K down to something a, a suitable size for a project that is nowhere near the size of KK. So um, that's taken a while to get my head around everything. But I would definitely like to... So I've spent a few days over the last few days for us refactoring and doing some work there. And I've gotten to the point where I've been thinking as well that this needn't be a part of our own repository. So whatever work is going on here to pull this out of K slash K... Um, I'd love to get involved with that too, because it'd make much more sense for us to standardize on something there instead of creating our own one, um, which was originally a fork. And, right. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if maybe the meeting topic was super vague and that's why a bunch of people showed up. I did try to put in the specific PR that we wanted to discuss in the description. So it was clear, like we were blocked on this. Here's the comment that said we were blocked and here's what we're going to talk about. But, I am super interested in the fact that a bunch of people like the word E2E framework and refactor and want to come show up and talk about it. So we do have uh, like this testing common sub project that I, th I guess Tim runs, but I, I don't know how often y'all have been meeting. I've seen the, the thing drop off, but it, there's like a 7.30 a.m. Pacific, which is kind of European friendly, since I see this is also a relatively European friendly time slot. Maybe it makes sense to have these sorts of discussions over there. Because I, I personally would be interested in not having a strong opinion that there be only one true authoritative way to end-to-end -end test Kubernetes. Because I think there are probably, pro, or, uh, there are probably pros and cons to a variety of different libraries and frameworks. And and I'd rather that the community of people who are working on all that stuff have some place to, to, work on it, share ideas, that sort of thing. Like even the community meeting yesterday. Uh, Marco Seppi came by and demonstrated like a Python based end to end testing framework that seemed like it might make a lot of sense to have some community support behind. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in 
and I don't know if I'm counter to the opinions of uh, Tim here since the project kind of was born out of a, a proposal he put forward, but I think like having more people talk about frameworky things in general, and if they don't want to post them in their own bespoke repos, but put them up in the Kubernetes SIGs org under the sponsorship of SIG testing, like we're super, I think we're super okay with that and seeing like what wins out, what most people adopt, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this modification into staging might be exactly that, right? Like we might actually stage it out through that method. Yeah, but I, so I think like Jane, you know, that Patrick's taking the real, <laughs> the incredibly laudable and long and painful process of taking the existing thing and detangling it and, and moving us towards extracting it. And I feel like I, I hear James talking at about approach where he just has reverse engineered and started from scratch in a clean room. Um, and like maybe those, those meet different use cases uh, or maybe we'll find one ends up being easier than the other. I guess the analogy I would think of would be client go and all of its uh, intricacies that have been born out of years of experience with working with the Kubernetes API versus something that's, I just want to go client to talk to Kubernetes. I don't need a, a ton of heavyweight stuff. So there might be room for both of these. There are probably even more approaches than that. But I, I'm encouraged to see people uh, interested in both of these. So just to confirm at the minute, would this fall under specifically the testing commons sub project? I'm not so familiar with some of the governance side of things, like if I want to carry on getting involved. I, I don't know that it matters a ton. Like, honestly, we were one of the first six to create a sub project uh, with a separate meeting time. It was really just a, a time, you know, uh, Hans and Maria had an integration test framework that they wanted. I think with this was within the context of Kube CTL testing and so it made sense to just like have a separate meeting to talk about pushing that forward Yeah, there was there were a couple different parties who are all interested in basically the same thing um, We needed a separate venderable library that was agnostic to the KK depth graph that folks could import as we start to break apart some of these uh, tools, right? And we wanted to be relatively minimalistic uh, so that way we could reuse as much as possible and folks wouldn't have to reinvent the square wheel, right? And, uh, you know, there are issues and other stuff that we've kind of addressed over time. And I, I have, uh, I've had other problems with keeping that time, which has kind of been a problem because it's earlier in this time. Uh, so uh, I would like to maybe re-kick that conversation piece to make sure that we have uh, a broader swath of folks seeing how everyone here is interested and it's very European heavy, <laughs> I see, uh, to, to make sure that we have a time that works well for everybody. So I don't know, this could be that time. Uh, I, it conflicts for me, maybe Tim, I don't know, on the, the effort to migrate project infrastructure over to the CNCF. That is also a Friday at 9 a.m. call on alternating weeks. So if we kept this slot as bi-weekly, it's kind of Pacific friendly, uh, kind of European friendly. That's one option. We could also throw up a doodle to talk other, to, to see if there are other times that work. Thursday at 7 a.m. doesn't work for me because of India. Um, but basically, like I consider sub projects to more or less be a dime a dozen. All they are are like a representation that there's a group of people who all want to work on the same code base. And there are one or two people who we consider to be the owners and decision makers for that code base. So I'm totally fine if we have a sub project that's let's have the battle royale of frameworks or let's just have everybody talk about frameworks and stuff. Or if each framework has people who are super motivated to sort of chart out a roadmap for it, we can, we can do that too. I'm not super picky about it. I just, uh, I do like to see the interest and in, think a recurring meeting to talk about testing frameworks would be a good idea. Uh, so I guess I can take an AI to send out like a doodle or something to this group to see if there are times that maybe work better. Like I said, my preference would be for this slot right here right now. Um, this slot works better for me, but it's actually not better for some Europeans. Yeah, like I know it's kind of late for uh, late on a Friday for some of y'all. 
Um, I, I actually prefer even later because when my kids are in bed and I have time again. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's lunchtime or dinner dinner time, so that's that's usually the worst slot of the day. <laughs> but they are out just right now, so that's fine now. I think it's right, so. do a doodle and and we'll we'll see, I guess. Okay, yeah, I think a good survey usually helps. I mean, people who would be interested would respond. That way we can see how many people are interested in what time zones work for them. For sure. Um, so I think that's all I had, recognizing that it may not be the best convenient time for anybody. Does anybody else have anything they want to uh, talk about, share with us while we're all here? All right, cool. Oh, James, you're going to go off mute. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say much of value. I was just going to say five o'clock on a Friday afternoon is probably just the right time to talk about testing frameworks on a week today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with yeah. the appropriate beverage in hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up, regardless of your time zone. And uh, let's let's get this moving. Sounds great. See you. Thanks. Bye.